I guess I'm the third David to go here in a row. I was a little bit um, nervous about speaking in front of such an audience as today. So last night, I finished preparing my remarks, and I went to my wife to practice them for her. And let me tell you that at the end of my remarks, which lasted 15 minutes, she was snoring. So don't feel bad, because what I'm going to tell you today is a little bit more technical. I'm going to go into just one idea, and I'm going to go into it in quite some depth. But um, even, even though my wife was snoring at the end of the remarks, it didn't prevent her from having 20 minutes of suggestions. <laughs> Napoleon was sitting with his advisors, and his advisors were recommending a new general to lead a new military campaign. The advisors told Napoleon that the prospective general was very good with the men. He was very smart, and he had ex excellent tactics. Napoleon looked at his advisors and said, yes, but is he lucky? In our business, luck has a lot to do with things, but so do good tactics. One tactic that I use that I think has been a good tactic for me is selling short. When I sell something short, I'm not trying to create a hedge. I'm trying to create a profit. Each year, we've been profitable on our short sales. Our average return on capital on short selling over our six years has been 30%. We do this by identifying stocks that are both overvalued and deteriorating. In many cases, there is something wrong that we have unearthed that is not widely understood in the market. About once a year, we seem to find a financial institution that has large problems. Last year, we had Conseco. The year before that was CompuCredit. Before that were Saram Capital and Resource America. Each of these shares fell over 80% from the time that we shorted them. Today I want to tell you about our newest sort of financial short that falls into this category. I don't know whether it will fall 80%, but I believe it falls into this group as it has very similar characteristics. The company is called Allied Capital. It goes by ALD on the New York Stock Exchange, it has a market value of about $2.6 billion. It goes for about twice book value. Allied is what's known as a registered investment company, or a RIC. As a RIC, it pays no taxes, and it passes through its earnings each year as a dividend, sort of like how a REIT does. It's limited to one times financial leverage in order to qualify as a RIC. So since they have to pay out the earnings as a dividend, they are limited in the amount that they can grow. The way that they can grow is by selling equity at a higher you know, multiple of book value, and that's how they're able to then lever that equity and continue their growth. That's the only way the book value per share grows. As a result, they're constant clients of Wall Street, and I'll tell you, no matter what I say today, the Merrill Lynch's of the world are going to defend this stock to the death in the, in the foreseeable future. What they do is they make mezzanine loans to private companies and un take unrated first loss tranches of commercial mortgage-backed securitizations, or CMBS. Since they are a RIC and not a bank, or even an unregulated specialty finance company, they do not have to set up loan loss reserves in advance of credit defaults. Instead, they have to mark each investment to fair value on a quarterly basis. The good news for us, as you will see, is, is that they have to tell us the value of each investment in the back of every 10Q and every 10K. So what we have here is a closed-end mezzanine fund that's trading at two times net asset value. But let's talk about some of the specific investments. It's very hard to find information about most of the investments because the companies are, are private that they invest in. But we have, through public sources and, and, and market information, been able to get some information on a few of the companies, and I'd like to start by telling you about some of them. First one I want to talk about is an entity called Velocita. Velocita is an investment that was sponsored by Cisco. We believe that Cisco holds an investment in Velocita's secured revolver. It is senior to the publicly traded bonds that, Velo that uh, Allied owns. All right. In the October quarter, we understand that Cisco wrote down its investment in Velocita to zero. At year-end 2001, Allied Capital carried its investment, which is subordinated to the Cisco investment, at par, and it carried the warrants at cost. Okay? Even after they took down the write-down in the March quarter, 
They continued to value their investment in Velocita at about 40 cents of par, even as the debt takes today at about two. Another investment is a company called StarTech Global Communications. Here they have $20 million invested that they carried at par through 2001. They even increased their investment in the company in June by an additional $15 million, despite the clear evidence that StarTech was falling. Arthur Anderson's auditor, letter to StarTech in the 2010K, said that the company has suffered recurring losses from operations, has a net capital deficiency and working capital deficit. These facts raise substantial doubt about the company's ability to continue as a going concern. Similar language was repeated in each subsequent filing with emphasis on the significant risk that StarTech would miss a critical November interest payment. Allied did not write down its investment in StarTech until the fourth quarter of 2001, after which StarTech had already filed for bankruptcy. Nettel filed for bankruptcy in late 2000, and an auction of its assets was held in December of 2000. Allied valued its debt investment in Nettel at par in the third and fourth quarter of 2000. They continue to value their investment in Nettel at about 40%. They claim that the value recovered, recorded on Nettel investment represents its estimate of what its claim of Nettel's assets are worth, and it believes it will receive the money, this despite the fact that a Chapter 7 liquidation sale was completed over a year ago. <laughs> Next up is the Lowen Group. Allied owned publicly traded high yield bonds throughout the Lowen reorganization. They carried the bonds at a premium to where the bonds traded and a premium to the recovery value estimated in the disclosure statement. We asked the company why they did not use the market value to value the bonds. The CFO informed us that the trading market was thin and not representative of where willing buyers and sellers would discover value. Based on its own analysis of low end situation, Allied had concluded that its valuation was appropriate. Unfortunately, once the bonds were restructured and the reorganized security prices have demonstrated that not only the, but the market and the disclosure documents were too optimistic, but certainly allied as well. In my opinion, when we find a few mismarkings like this in a portfolio, it suggests problems in the general behavior of the company and it puts the value of the entire portfolio in doubt. Another source of income for allied are what we will call controlled investments. By this, I mean these are investments where Allied owns all or almost all of the equity. In ordinary gap accounting, as applied to operating businesses, when you own a controlling investment in a company, you have to consolidate the results. Transactions between you and your wholly controlled subsidiary are called intra-company transactions, and they are eliminated in the consolidation. Not so in Allied's RIC accounting. They do not consolidate these controlled investments, and they do not in eliminate the intra-company transactions from the consolidated results. The creation of these wholly controlled investments is a relatively new practice for Allied over the last couple of years. One thing Allied does do with these controlled investments is provide services, such as investment banking, for which they charge fees. In 1999, Allied had no controlled investments. It generated and recorded fee income of around $6 million, which was flat with fee income in 1998. In 2000, fee income had grown to $13 million. Last year on the P&L, fee income was $46 million. That's nice growth. According to the CFO, however, $29 million of the fees come from the controlled investments. One of the controlled investments is a company called Business Loan Express. Business Loan Express makes small business loans under the SBA. Even though Business Loan Express is 100% owned by Allied, which is a public company, Allied provides no data on Business Loan Express. We don't know how much it earns. We don't know how its portfolio of risky small business loans has performed during the recession. We don't even know how large the portfolio is or how much leverage it uses. What we do know is that in addition to the fees that I just mentioned, Business Loan Express pays Allied a 25% rate of interest, or $20 million a year, on an $80 million investment that Allied has lent to Business Loan Express. Since Allied owns all of the equity, I guess they can decide what the interest rate on the loan will be and what they charge in their fees. But in my opinion, this is the sort of thing, the sort of left pocket to right pocket, that explains why intra-company transactions are eliminated under most accounting systems.